Oh, good morning, YouTube. <laughs> I am Tarka the Newt, and welcome to another episode of Tarka Talks. And today, I'm just going to talk about something that matters to me. I'm out here in the middle of a field. Can we see the... Yeah, there's a farm back now. I'm in a cornfield. <clears throat> not that you can tell, because of the weather. Um, I really regret not wearing sunglasses today. We're bringing a cap, <laughs> but it is what it is. Uh, but I just wanted to talk about something. Um, anywho, uh, what was I going to talk about? Oh yeah, Goodwill. <laughs> I don't know how many people know this, but I, uh, I actually worked for Goodwill for over six years. Um, I was just a cashier, uh, but I, you know, eventually made it into a position of authority I was like a lead cashier kind of not really it was a very unofficial thing but I did a lot of management type stuff anyway the reason I'm saying that is um I recently saw a video I'll probably do a, a response video at some point maybe I don't know but um it was Illuminati and I love Illum Illuminati I love her channel and I love her videos and and she's great but her goodwill video uh, had some serious issues in it, and they're the same issues I have with almost anybody who tries to talk about Goodwill. Um, let me just start walking here. I, gotta, I actually need to head home here before too soon, and I'm way out in the cornfield. But um, what I'm talking about is I, nothing she said was wrong. Like, seriously, everything she said was spot on. I totally agree with it. I think she did a great job. The only problem I have is that um, a lot of people don't realize that um, Goodwills are actually set up so that they're, they're organized by different areas and each different area is almost like its own company that is run very separately from all the others. Um, so it's like, the reason I say that is because it's, it's an important designation because it's like, yeah, there's these locations out west that are terrible. They're, you know, they're they're using every excuse to pay people like 22 cents an hour and firing people and and doing like all sorts of horrible things. Like, um, like the one guy was blamed for uh, an accident that resulted in a coworker's death when it was really the company's fault. I mean, they were making these guys use equipment that they weren't trained to use, and then they, you know, fired him. And but anyway, my point is that's out west, you know, that's other locations. But you know, I worked for Goodwill Keystone area and, and they were great. Like they quite literally saved my life. These people, they they helped me. I was unemployable. I, I'd been searching for a job for seven years. Seven years I was unemployed. And the funny thing is, um, you know, after that amount of time, you, you get in with the interviewer and they're like, Oh, why is there such a big gap in your employment? Because there's a gap in my employment. You know, employers see that gap and that's a red flag and they just ignore you. So you just keep getting ignored. And it just, after seven years, nobody wanted to touch me. Except Goodwill. And they, I'm not going to lie, they quite literally saved my life. And while I was working there, I learned to work with kids with disabilities. And I helped so many people with disabilities learn job skills. And I saw so many other people do the same thing. And it's just... What bothers me is people will hear these stories about these locations out west, and then they'll stop coming to our store. They'll stop spending money at our store and stop donating. And that hurts us. That hurts this company that actually does help people, um, even though the company is fine. You know, our company, people come up to us and it's like, oh, your president made X millions of dollars. And I'm just like, um, no, our president is a volunteer who only sometimes gets paid and he's voted into his position because we're Goodwill Keystone and that's, you know, we're separate than those other entities. You know, we're not, not all Goodwills are connected. And it, it, it bugged me because uh, when Illuminati made her video, she said that at the beginning, kind of, and she, she barely brought it up. And um, when people who get a lot of viewership like that say things like that and then people repeat it, people you know it, it hurts the local companies and it just it bothers me it bothers me because that company was doing good 
and, and they're going to be hurting because of this, you know, it just, uh, you guys know what I'm saying. <laughs> it just, um, there was another thing too. Um, everybody keeps saying, you know, Goodwill, they get their goods for free. And it's like, yeah, yeah, people drop it off and don't expect any payment. But um, see, here's the thing. For your goods to make it to the shelf, a lot of times they've got to be cleaned up. They've got to be sorted. They've got to be priced. Um, sometimes they even need to be fixed, which a lot of times we won't do. We'll just throw them away or give them to another charity. Um, or uh, in our store, there was a location we sent it out to where they had these big bins that would be just full of stuff and you would just buy it by the pound. And that's that's usually where stuff ended up that was broken. We didn't bother fixing like lamps and crap. But um, it frustrates me when people say that the stuff is free and they're charging so much for it, but it's not free, it's not. In fact, our location uh, relied heavily on uh, hidden gems, uh, items that were uh, basically new and of high high resale value and that's pretty much the only way we made money almost everything else was uh sold at a loss for the store i pretty much everything uh that you can imagine um and it's the thing is what, what really causes it is the people who donate their garbage um before the store opens it's illegal to to don't like we even put signs up you know it's illegal to to donate to leave donations here before store hours you know um but they would do it anyway but they knew what they were doing but people would drop stuff off that costs money to dispose of because they don't want to pay for it so they just drop it off to us and then we we don't have an option you know we can't just dump that in the dumpster and be and shrug it off you know we can't dump it off at a goodwill store we are a goodwill store so it's like we have to pay to have it disposed of and that you know and <clears throat> um, in with our store, <clears throat> everything after cost, like the cost of paying the employees um, and paying rent and paying utilities, every penny of that had to go into a state fund that was checked by state officials. And then that fund would be used uh, for public assistance programs like the Live to Work Foundation or whatever it was. It's, it's gone now. But... Um, kids who had disabilities in school rather than going to college or whatever or, or whatever while they were in high school they would come work at the goodwill or do work around town and just just learn a trade basically um and you know they they would be accompanied by a social worker and for the most part the money went to paying the social workers who would go with them and it was great it was really good and i remember seeing a lot of kids who were who were all but hopeless like there was no chance for them no chance for them outside that program but they you know they would turn into these functioning adults despite their disabilities and it was great it was great to see it was great to be a part of and it just it breaks my fucking heart to hear people say the things that they say about goodwill and and say it about the goodwill i worked at like i understand i completely understand that the other goodwills are terrible and i agree like i you know don't tolerate that shit but, like, hashtag not all goodwills, I, I don't know what to say. Like, we helped so many people, and then to hear people say the things that they say about us, it's just heartbreaking. Uh, it's crazy, you know? And, and, you know, people are stealing things, and they don't want to pay their price. Well, that money, you're, you're making a donation. You're not just buying something. You're making a donation to these these public foundations, and that's just... And to watch that live to work program just go under like that and just stop, uh, it killed me. It, it, it tore a piece of my heart out. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and it was all because of these damned rumors. And, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't make ends meet. You know, after it was like, I remember, I remember it was around 2017 or so. Uh, right before I left the company, um, there were, it was right after we paid, uh, we paid the, you know, they paid the employees and then, um, they paid the rent and then they paid the utilities. And after all that, <laughs> we ended up sending like 20 bucks to the foundation. Well, to the 
we ended up depositing 20 bucks into the uh the state account and it was like uh, it just it was heartbreaking it was so bad there were no people like the place was usually packed that time of year too that's the thing um it just I don't know. And then I see something like this, these people on YouTube and people online saying bad shit and saying and, and acting like it's all of goodwill. It's not. It's not all goodwill. Um as a former employee, just if you're worried about where you're sending your donation, like let me just back up a bit. First of all, I completely understand the uh the misgivings. Uh it's totally understandable, you know, when you hear this stuff, but don't blame your local goodwill on something that happened in fucking California or Ohio or Arizona, unless that's your local goodwill. <laughs> I can't believe I have to say that. Like, it just, it bugs me. You know, people don't understand that there's a difference. Um, and if you're worried as what I was going to say is, um, as a former employee, if you're worried about your location and, um, you know, whether or not you should be donating, you know, or if, or if they're worth your time and money and stuff, just talk to the employees. It's not that hard. Not a manager. Talk to the employees themselves. Just be like, hey, I need some help. And then when you get them over to like a quiet corner or whatever, just be like, hey, does the company treat you well? You know, <laughs> are you doing all right? Just, you know, ease it into the conversation and and you'll, you'll get your answer. Uh, chances are. So that's just... Um, I don't know, guys. <laughs> that was that was a little more soul searching than I meant to do this morning. I just I just wanted to talk about that that goodwill thing for a minute. Um, but I uh, yeah, I just the reason I left is because of my health. I just couldn't really do it anymore. Oh, there's a big hill here. Ugh. I just couldn't really do it anymore. It was just too physical. The job I was at, and there were no positions open for me to switch so uh i just i had to go into something else and luckily i found uh work at a front desk at a hotel where i get to sit at a desk and watch youtube videos and play video games and just check people in and the most the most physical thing i ever have to do is walk back and forth to a, a hotel room because somebody can't figure out how to open their door or whatever <laughs> you know that's that's it i gotta bring somebody a towel so that's good but unfortunately, with um, all these close downs and whatnot, I I may actually be out of that job uh, here soon. You hear that? What the hell is that? Some kind of fire alarm or something. There's there's a lot of industry around here, so I hear things like that all the time. I don't know what the hell it is, but uh, yeah, I I may be out of my job here soon if the hotel closes, and and that's gonna kill me. Like I can't. We won't keep the house. Uh, we won't be able to pay that rent. So I don't know what we're gonna do. And supposedly there's this $600 stimulus. That's like one of my paychecks. So I don't know what the hell that's gonna do. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not worrying about that right now. Right now I'm just enjoying the snow. It's, uh, it's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit out here, so it's very chilly. I am sorry to anybody who lives outside of North America. I have no idea what that is in Celsius, but uh, it's below freezing, I can tell you that. <laughs> well below freezing. Uh, so anyway, guys, I guess I'll just end it there. Um, I didn't make the full 15 minutes like I wanted to, but I thought I could stretch it out by talking about the weather and stuff, but I don't know what to say. Uh, Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate the uh, enthusiasm and support. I like taking you on a little walk here. Maybe in the future I'll um, walk through town, show you guys what New Holland looks like, the, the town I live in, and uh, show you all the shopkeepers and all that good stuff. It's fun. <laughs> it's a cool little town. I like the, I'm really proud of this place. Um, despite it being farm country, people are very uh, accepting and open-minded. We all grow up being around people who are multi, you know, bilingual and of different races. Um, there, <laughs> trans people live here, uh, pretty much with zero question. I mean, there's a girl who is a trans woman at the subway here and she just kind of works at the counter. And, uh, the only, <laughs> what's ironic 
is the only times I ever see anybody having any tr trouble as far as that goes is when it's people from out of town. <laughs> so anyway, that was my bit. Thanks for watching, guys. I, I appreciate you. I'll see you on the next episode.